like I said, my name is Chris Richmond. I'll go ahead and warn you, I'm not a public speaker. The last time I did this was a couple months ago, and I actually dropped profanity in front of a church. So fingers crossed I can do better than that. Um, as you said, I'm a custom mapping specialist with uh, USGS, and with that, I kind of get the projects that come into USGS that don't really fit one of our standard products, like our US topo or things like that. Sometimes that's a request from a politician, uh, you know, to pretty, pretty picture of their state or their district. Uh, in other instances, like the project I'm going to talk to you today about, which is the Arctic Regional Policy Act uh, uh, project, it's a area. It's the a region in the uh, in the Arctic that they, they wanted to highlight the uh, indigenous community. Well, the communities there, and that's some other information and build on a previous project. All right, this project presents. Well, to give you some background. Um, D. Williams, my counterpart in Alaska, he noticed that there was an office that uh, they had some maps that were developed, and we wanted to take this project, kind of put the USGS spin on it, and put our cartographic standards on it. So this project was born from that. It's a series of general reference maps showing relevant geospatial features of the U.S. Arctic boundary as defined by the U.S. Congress since 1984. The first generation of the U.S. Arctic Research and Policy Act, which we just call ARPA, uh, boundary maps was originally formatted and published in 2009 by a private firm contracted with the Natu National Science Foundation and the U.S. Arctic Research Commission. Um, and D, the reason he kind of thought about taking this project on was he recognized that right now there's a you know, the steadily increasing relevance of the Arctic issues to national and global affairs that require more functional projections and online tools. Um, and the USGS Alaska Regional Office uh, and my office at NG Talk um, developed the, uh, basically took those three maps and we decided to refresh them with uh, more up-to-date uh, information. Now I'm just going to go off of the presentation just so that these, I can display, display these maps. And hopefully that translates well. All right, so the first three maps we're going to discuss are basically rehashes of their existing maps. Uh, like I said, the ones that we took, they were kind of basic, didn't have a whole lot to it, but they, were, they still they did their intended purpose, but they were out of date. So this first map shows the ARPA boundary as it relates to Alaska and the marine features of the Bering Sea. This map features the continuous ARPA boundary as it relates specifically to Alaska, the Russia coast, or Russian coast, and the selected marine features of the Bering Sea. It highlights the ARPA boundary areas that dip south in the Arctic Circle in northwestern Alaska after intersecting with the Porcupine River to follow the course of the Yukon River, then continues along the Kuskokwim River, and I'll go ahead and apologize if I butcher these uh, names, uh, in southwestern Alaska. The boundary the line then follows the shoreline around Bristol Bay to the Alaska Peninsula as far as, fall, as False Pass before dropping southward below Senek Island to follow a non-linear 24-mile non radial buffer south of the Aleutian Islands from Unamak Island westward beyond Atu Island across international dateline to meet the shoreline of Russia near the Kamchatka River. Then the boundary follows the Russian coast north to where it hits the, or comes back in touch with the uh, Arctic Circle. Uh, and in these maps, in just the top left, we have a little inset to show that this is just a small piece of ARPA, and this should kind of just show just a, kind of an extent of this individual map. And I know that was map sheet one, I'm jumping into map sheet three, but it's just the way they had them published. They should have had them ordered. This should have been map sheet two because it's just the second on that individual one. Uh, this is the same base map, but there's just a different theme to it. This is more um, uh, map sheet three replicates the first map that we just saw, uh, but within that international context, it explicitly delineates the full extent of Arctic ter territorial land and waters claimed by the United States. Because the ARPA boundary was established by Congress to define the Arctic for U.S. operations and science administration purposes, this map series includes a sheet that explicitly delineates the extent of the U.S. Arctic territorial claims and maritime limits, uh, and including the territorial seas, out, which goes out 12 nautical miles, the contigu contiguous zone, uh, which is out 24 nautical miles in the U.S. exclusive economic zones, out 200 nautical miles plus maritime boundaries with adjacent or opposite countries. All right, in this uh, map sheet, map sheet two, this features the full Arctic Regional Policy Act region, the uh, boundary area. 
From a global circum circumpolar perspective, it conveys key components of Arctic geospatial information, otherwise absent from the first two maps, uh, including the Arctic Circle and its intersection with circumpolar international boundaries and Arctic longitudinal compass, uh, as well as including the 2020 representation of maximum sea ice extent and the 2020 representation of the July 10 degrees Celsius isotherm. And so those were the first three maps that there was already something that was very similar, similarly done in the past. And for that, we didn't want to give them a completely new product, so we wanted to stay true to what they had already done in the past. Um, but then after this is where I got, kind of got to have a little bit more fun because I got to just make up something that add a little bit of value to the, what they already had. Okay. And on screen, it doesn't really do it justice. I this, when I originally wanted to do this, I just wanted to have this in the map gallery, but uh, uh, my bosses thought it would be better that I present it. But this is the map where I uh, was kind of given some free reign to run, being a custom mapping specialist. I said, hey, why don't you develop something that provides a little bit more than just the boundaries and things like that. We want to know more about the terrestrial features of, uh, of Alaska. So in this map, you have land cover uh, within the ARPA region, and this one is only focused on the mainland. It's hard to do this all in one map for the Aleutian Islands as well as the mainland and, not, and maintain some level of detail. Um, yeah. So they, in here, you have the ARPA boundary as it relates to terrestrial features of mainland Arctic Alaska north and west of the Yukon and Kuskokwim rivers. Good. The, the sheet conveys key components of Arctic geospatial information that wasn't present, present in the previous maps that were made in uh, 2009. Uh, that includes things like the city village locations, relative popula uh, population of these villages that fall within the Arctic, uh, land cover, tree line extent, uh, juxtaposed with the ARPA boundary, the Arctic Circle, uh, and then national parks, uh, you know, there's just a lot more information here that just wasn't available before. Uh, and with this, unlike the previous maps that were, you know, little uh, eight and a half by 11s, this is now, a, or well, I guess the ones we made were 11 by 17, but this one is a larger poster, si poster size uh, product so that they can get a lot more information. So when we completed those first four maps, uh, we went to our end users, gave them about four or five months to kind of digest them, see, have any suggestions. They loved everything in it, but they did want something focused on the Aleutians. So that was kind of a task for us because on the one hand, we didn't want to just have a map of the Aleutian Islands because maybe somebody who's not familiar with Alaska, so they, they may not be able to put the two, one and two together. So with this map, we still show the mainland Alaska, but it's at a scale that we can see the entire state. But I was able to leave enough room that we could put in insets for each of the Aleutian Islands. It's basically all the same information, but one other thing they did want because of the Aleutians, they wanted, a, a, uh, I'm sorry, volcanoes added to the... Uh, uh, to the data frames. Um, and the reason we did it this way is each of those data frames, insets, they kind of follow the path of the Aleutians and they're all done at one to million scale. So when they're looking at it, they're not looking at multiple scales, and, but they're getting more detail on the Aleutians and, and still seeing it in relation to the mainland of Alaska. Now in doing these maps, um, we realized from the beginning a static map is awesome, but at the same time, a lot of people want something a little bit more interactive. So phase one were these maps that we've already delivered, and now we're in the process. Uh, I've been working, our office doesn't have the capability uh, to maintain it, but we're working with the USGS Wisconsin Water Center. They have folks who can do web app development far, far better than I. And what we're doing is taking all this information from all these maps and putting it into a web app. And I've worked with them to deliver the data, the data sources, uh, and then also the symbology. So it's, it's going to be one big product with multiple aspects, but everything's going to have the same look and feel. So if you're, they're using our static maps or they make their own little map when they go to put it in a presentation or if they go something along those lines, it all is going to have the same common look and feel. Um, um, but again, that's, uh, that's right now I've, we did our, we're probably about 80% done with that web application, so that'll probably be ready in the next few months. Um, and all these maps are available on the US, USGS publication site. Um, Unless anybody has any questions, my presentation was pretty short. Yes. Oh. Where did you get the 2020 uh, maximum sea ice? Ah, uh, give me a second. I've got it all cataloged. Let me see if I can quickly find it. I 
Oh, I'm sorry, I was not ready for a data source. Uh, yeah. so I've got a catalog set up for it all. Uh, yeah, and that's another thing. With, when we moved to the uh, um, web viewer for it, things like the sea ice, isotherm, and all that, that's going to be something that can be updated in real time. Uh, let's see. Sea ice extent is. Let's see, is this one right here? Uh, just from an, I can't remember the. I, I have to go on the exact, but it's. I've got this information here, but it's just from the service on ArcGIS Online. Um, Okay, I, I, again, I'm not in a, I just kind of, that was a, I do the map part of it, but I would have, I can take that back to my D. Williams to see if he wants to update it with the NCI Center. Yeah, there are a lot of sources, but most of them aren't very good. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'll plead ignorance on that one, but I'll believe you. <laughs> All right. Made it through without profanities. All right. <laughs> <laughs>